I think it's definitely up there. Um, it's a shame there's no silverware on offer just for that match alone. <laughs> um, no, I can't be too greedy. Um, yeah, obviously delighted to get the win there. Judd's been on a phenomenal run. Um, really held himself well as, as a world champion. Um, I knew I'd have my hands full and I knew he'd come sort of all guns blazing from 10-6 from down today. So um, delighted to hold him off in the end. How big were those three frames at the end of the second session? Because 7-6 and it's all getting a little bit tight and edgy. And then three half centuries, boom, boom, boom. And all of a sudden you come in today with a four frame cushion. Yeah, I, I went to the toilet after one of the frames and I thought to myself, you know, eight, I think I was eight, six up and I thought, you know, I'm happy. Uh, eight all, I would have took that. You kind of like give yourself little missions throughout little mini sessions. And then I sort of kind of snapped myself out of it and I said, no, that's not good enough. I wanted two more. I wanted 10-6. So, um, yeah, delighted that I managed to put together two good breaks after that and, and finish that session strongly. Your attitude when you play, Judd, is, is always very positive. Not aggressive, but you're, you're up for it. The, these are the kind of occasions that you first picked up a cue for. And I think you seem to have that approach that, right, if I'm going to be the best, I've got to beat the best and I'm not going to shy away from these matches. Yeah, I take a lot of motivation from, from the greats, you know, like your Hendrys, your Davis, your Ronnies, Higgins, Williams, you know. I can imagine they'd be thinking, you know, I want to beat this guy. I, I want to be better than this guy. There's no point in, uh, you know, trying to dodge them. Um, you know, we've never played at the Crucible. It was one place I, I really wanted to play, Judd. And, um, yeah, really pleased that we managed to put on a really good performance. And, you know, in these strange times, you can sort of accept, you know, maybe there might not be the odd good session. But, um, yeah, I thought it was a really good match on the, on, on the whole. Yeah, it was, it was cracking to watch. Now we look ahead to the semis where you will undoubtedly be the favourite because not only have you got semi-final experience from playing Higgins a couple of years ago, you know whether it's McGill or Mafflin, you're playing a qualifier and you're in the world's top eight. Any added pressure that you'll be expected to win that one? No, not really. Um, you know, there's always going to be favourites and, and sort of underdogs. You know, that's for other people to decide. You know, I won't take anybody for granted. Um, you know, whether it's Kurt Mafflin, whether it's Anthony McGill, they're both fantastic players, fantastic lads. Um, you know, it'll be a dream come true for them to be in the semi-finals of the World Championship. So, you know, everything will probably feel like a bonus to them and that makes them very dangerous. And presumably you're looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the semi-finals. For me, it's the best venue on earth. I love coming here. I'm so glad we've got it on this year and um, to make the one table set up again, I'm, I'm delighted. Betfred, proud sponsor of the World Snooker Championship.